All right, guys, hello and welcome back once again in Group A for the European Challenger Cup, week number six, the group round robin stages. Hinderman will be joining once again. We're going to be watching Six Sigma facing off against Team Illusion in this one. Yeah, round two game. We don't normally bring you the round two games, but we've got a little bit of delay. We would have brought you the round three, but before we bring you this one, while the other one's still going on, Six Sigma yep. versus Team Illusion on your screen. Six Sigma starting on the bottom side of the map, the left hand side of your Spectre EUI. You're seeing Bobasaur in the solo lane as Hercules, Mr. Crunchy as Bass as Det in the jungle. Fex says playing Raw once again in the mid lane, vote MBK and Apollo this time, and Deku screw up on that Sylvanas one more time round. Bird. That is all. Team Illusion, right hand side, we're in the red trunks defending the Titan of Chaos. We do have Kazpu in the soul lane as Tyr, Mir in the jungle being played by Samsa, Resu as the mid lane Agni, Zeta playing Sobak in the support role, and finally Kirko as the 80 carry Hunter Ool. Don't start the game, nothing too exciting to talk about. We actually did see though, that the right hand side, we did see Ymir go for that jungle start, clear out the back harpies, help to do his blue as well. Now he's going to rotate straight to that mid lane and give Tyr solo experience there for the whole majority of this game. Yeah, uh, Sam go on. Sam's already over here as well. Not a purple pot, pot start coming out from the Emir. More than a typical, he has the Hand of the Gods as well, so well, a slower wave player coming out. As left side, Zeta does plug Deku Scrub back into his lineup. Kirko and him putting a lot of damage onto him. Deku's in a lot of trouble. Gonna he be will go down. And I think MBK's in trouble too here. He's trying to juke out autos and he's not going to find anything either. So that's a double kill over into Team Illusion's pocket. And that's a one actually for the support and one for all. So that transcendence will be online a little bit quicker too now. Six Sigma in a little bit of trouble early on. Yeah, so Team Illusion do have that first and second blood drawn. They're going to deny a wave of golden experience. The level difference in that dual lane right now is already two. And Kirko is going to be hanging around getting a little bit of early damage to the tower. Not going to be a whole lot this early on. But Mr. Crunchy's making his way over here. They are already well aware of this occurring. They're backing off. They don't the want to get caught out. Yeah, they, they they're full health though at the same time. Yeah, I don't think they've got kill potential here. I mean, Crunchy's probably just going to help him out in the lane a little bit more now. I think this is a little bit of a swing pick coming out from Team Illusion. They pick Sobek and Ymir. We didn't see picks of bands, but I would have expected the Ymir to be the solo, uh, so they be the support. Yeah. And you probably see Sobek in the solo lane, and they've mixed it up a little bit, probably with the last pick of Tear or something like that to say, hey, I ain't got a minute. This is the coming going with this Ymir jungle. Has probably put me in a bit of a weird spot because Sobek very very good against the Sylvanas a bit underrated against him has healing reduction mm -hmm. and also the pluck potential and Sylvanas not one of the most mobile gods in the world yeah Mira has a great great yeah great gang set up though also coming out of the jungle well Sobek in a soul lane he's kind of just going to be there forever Hercules is kind of the same sort of thing but the Mir, when he picks up that blink you have blink frost breath you have those frost walls if someone tries to run away only a few guys inside of Six Sigma actually have escape uh, ways to escape. Vernon BK is a, it's a dash, it's not a leap, he can't get over the walls. It's really only Mr. Crunch who can actually avoid a wall-initiated gank in the jungle. Well, jungle comes to the bond, the mid harpies, left hand ones. You can see Team Illusion in position, right hand ones. They're also in position, forming the T Sigma. Lose both of those on either side, just extending their lead a little bit further at the moment. Thanks to those first two kills. You can see again, Zata going aggressive in the mid lane. Yep, going to force into the lurking the waters. Looking to be safe. Bexes once Ooh. again connects with that searing pain and finds a kill over there. I, I think he's still batting 100 on that. It looks like it is, and now Samsa's in trouble too. On the back of that, they're going to continue chasing with the blinding light as well. The slow coming out, but a great stun from Resu is actually going to save his life. Deku could have tried to make a play here, gets a good pull onto Resu, but he's not panicking just yet. Doesn't have any escape, that's why he's not panicking. He's going to bravely walk away from that one. And 2-1 to one is the scoreline. Team Illusion came into the sixth seed, coming up against first seed Six Sigma. And they're doing a good job so far. Yeah, it's definitely looking early on in this matchup. This one is far from over though, we're only four minutes into this one. Mid, uh, the mid-harpies haven't even respawned yet. They spawned for the first time, however. So we'll see, going forward. I mean, looking at these team comps, you give an edge to either team. I mean, both teams have fairly balanced compositions. Yeah, they both have pretty balanced compositions on, on paper. I feel though, as this game goes on, if Team Illusion needs to snowball this just because of how their compositions with the double guardian, Ymir in the jungle, they're gonna look in for Ymir to make as many plays as pos possible on this, and we'll see what's going on. Yep, left side's added to get pulled in by the Grasping Earth. However, grasping, the grab, we'll go with that. I couldn't remember the build. I got him confused. Got pulled in, to one tail up later, able to just safely stroll his way on back out of the enemy minion wave. It'll be interesting later on because there's a lot of displacement abilities in both of these teams. You have the, the Earthbreaker and the grab on the side of Six Sigma, while Team Illusion is going to be down to the charge probably. And more importantly, Kazpu with that tier is going to be in the middle of things quite a, while, uh, quite a while in these fights. 
I wouldn't necessarily say either team can have the advantage in that regard, but it's going to be a rough time for these guys to actually stay Pressure in position. left hand they side. Going to actually catch Deku Scrub with his lazy back in, and he's going to get picked up as well by Resu. He got hit by a bomb on the lazy back. That was free, and now they're going to get the purple buff off it as well. Fex says, does deny Resu a minion wave in mid lane, but they lose the purple and maybe the red as well. Yeah, they're looking for Zada. of going to be looking for the pluck, and we'll find it on the Pexes. No real escapability is on hand. Lurking the Warriors applying Great a very, combo. very large slow. Zada's going to fall, but the damage was applied. Kirko looking for the kill. One more shot. Ooh. Bob over the wall. He finds it. But Navo MBK comes in with the across this guy's looking for the trade out with Kirko. The axe pays for his life with the stun. The bleed may bring down Kirko, but Resu gets himself a double killing trade for Kirko's life. Six to three, a team illusion now. And it's the dueling that's causing all the issues, as well as his Agni. They've been milking that early first and second blood they got that experience lead. I mean, look at the levels still coming out of this one. It's level seven, level eight to level five, level six. And they're not letting that lead go. They stole away the jungle. And Deacon Scrubs can take a little poke here. Wall's gonna come up as well. Resu kind of low on mana. They don't want to stick around the jungle too long. Sam's uh, getting pulled in. Didn't really have a choice in the matter, but again, he'll be able to just kind of stroll his way out of this one safely. They're not letting up that early lead they got in that duo lane. If they keep this up, Six Sigma are going to have a real rough time getting these things back to even and possibly in their favor later on. A hop is in mid. Spawn again. Left ones. Look like they will go to Team Illusion or who are already in position. Maybe Crunchy will try and make something happen. A little bit too late, Mr. Crunchy. The hog nowhere near landing. Meanwhile, Resu going to get the right ones all to himself. So that experience lead now stretches to 3.4k and 2,000 gold in Illusion's favor. Yep, so as things continue forward on this one, Gold Fury could be in the sights of Team Illusion if they can find another couple kills as they have so far this matchup. Over the dual lane, Kirko kind of more than happy to sit there in a 2v1 situation, and why not? He has a two-level advantage over anyone else in that lane, and stacks on that transcendence, it's building quite, quite rapidly. He's able to trade back and forth quite comfortably. Yeah, it was transferred backwards and forwards between that. Red buff going to be dropped down by Samsa here over on the left hand side. Given over to Resu as well. As you can see, Zata and Kirko picking up their purple buff. Gold Fury still standing for the time being, though, Zaiden. And I'd like to see Team Illusion try and abuse the fact of their early game guardians here to mm -hmm. try and put the pressure on. They've got a couple of kills advantage. This transcendence, 32 stacks in. Yeah. To four. And those of our Gauntlets have been up for a little while. It's not a case of Von Amike just got back to lane in this one. He's just not being given the luxury of last hitting. He's not even able to get in range to get experience of gold right now. They're hard freeze in this lane. If he goes forward, Zada is just going to walk forward a couple feet. I have a Tail Whip. I have a Charge Prey. I'm going to close those sorts of problems for you. And it's only when the wave finally is half killed by his own wave and it just sort of naturally moves forward that he's actually able to start getting farm again. Well, Kuchi's trying to make something happen with this rotation here. He's got two kills. He's been involved in all three for his team. And they're going to have to rely on him a little bit. His Deku Scrub still level 6. Going to get pinched here again. He's not going to have anything about Wrath of Terror to try and keep himself alive. Great bombs over the wall from Resu. That's a dead tree one more time. Kirko taking the bleed from the cats. But Mr. Crunchy's been put in a bad spot. Kirko will survive. But no, he won't because Fex has fired a snipe. I, I, I'm not even sure about it anymore. He shows up, he uses it, he gets a kill. He doesn't miss with it. And it, it, it it's just kind of crazy at this point. It, it's, yeah, it's absurd. He lands them too much. It, it, it shouldn't be possible. That's that just was my just a tip. Yeah. He gave him just a tip and the tip yeah. was enough. Seven to four is Team Illusion. Now, Fex says actually helping to hold them in this game with that pick up there for them. Because I'm pretty sure they could have potentially done Gold Fury off that. Zata looking for a pick in mid lane if he can find it on this Sobek. He's been playing well from the support role, putting the pressure on. Deku Scrub really far behind right now. He's having a rough time of this, zero and three. And they keep picking him over and over again, which is not just denying him um, survivability, but it's also keeping him so low on levels. He's still level six. Yeah, it's going to be rough. He's not going to be having that level scaling for protections and health. And not only that, but the gold sitting in hand. There's a steel mail ready to be picked up for Zada next time he goes he goes back to base. He's going to be that much more tanky. Deku Scrub is sitting more or less at just about no goals. I think he's about 150, 200, 250 at this point in time. So it's not even a case he can go back and pick up an iron mail or anything like that. He's going to be squishy for a decent while in this matchup. I mean, mid harpies are about to spawn. They're going to be looking to take these. And Team Illusion really could turn their focus over to that gold fury. Because they have a really strong team fight presence right now. They just need to look for the fights. Well, so far they've got all sets of mid harpies and they're in position to try and go for that one more time. You can see Six Sigma, Mutsu Crunchy actually dropping down the purple buff with the help of OMBK to give them an over. And we can actually see the very first set of mid harpies go to Six Sigma on the left. Yep, they will indeed. Nobody has a way to leap over those walls for Team Illusion to try and steal those away. 
as they maybe look for a couple pick on the tail Kirko end of this one. Trading with Deku 1v1. No one's in support just yet. The blink oh, from no. Samson to try and close the gap for Deku. And now is the wall. Deku's in trouble, but now Crunchy is here. Right, Kirko going to use the glory bound back out to safety. They now try to disengage. And this one is Six Sigma has the number advantage. Uh, actually, I was mistaken. Resto was sneaking around the backside of the fight, but will end up withdrawing as well. They can definitely look at this gold here. They're sitting around that pit. Force the fight Resu. if nothing else right now. Resu. A little bit of an awkward position there being split from his team, but he's abusing and Deku's going to get caught out again. The tree is one more time about to be burned down. Oh, that, that's, that burns. Literally, that burns. Yeah. Unfortunately for Sylvanas, Grover is made of wood and wood is flammable as they just found out the hard way. So, rough stuff. Gold Fury finally gets starting up. You see two people nearby. Vastad does have a regular old hug, but against the Wrath of the Gods can be a really, really rough steal. Fexus can look for some damage. Samsa's health bar is low, but they're not going to be able to find anything. Maybe a little damage. Maybe a quick kill here on Samsa. Damage could be there, but they're just kind of beating each other back and forth. Now. Oh, the focus of MBK comes in with the across the sky. That's a trade out Samsa. Now he's hitting Kirk with the back who's not noticed it yet. Lurking in the waters gets used. That's a trying to body blow, but the snipe from Fexus again says no. Denial. And on top of that, denial of the crocodile happens as we also see see Zata fall down to that too. Well, that definitely went a long way to evening things back out. Yeah, they got the gold fear, but on the back of those couple kills, you can see on the graph, it's a very small gold game going the way of Team Illusion, but Six Sigma, they got some much needed experience kind of even things back out. Deku Scrub hitting level 7 right now, still a decent ways behind, however, so the front line on the side of Six Sigma, not really there for the time being. Well, the front line for Six Sigma is all going to be Bulbasaur for the time yep. being now. Like you were saying, I mean, with, with Deku being so far behind, all he's going to have to his name is his own. He's only going to be useful for his ult. We need to see the Hog 3 come out from Bastet, probably, in this situation. And we also need to see uh, Bobasaur focus on going full tank man mode because they're going to need him in this game now because of how far behind uh, Deku is right now. Yeah, Teleport was actually just burned to get back to lane here as well, so he's not going to have that option of teleporting and join a fight for a little while, which could be a little bit of an awkward spot for him because, like you said, he is pretty much the front line for Six Sigma right now. And he's stuck in the Soul Lane Island for, the, for a good long while, because if he leaves, Cow's Poo has the option of saying, you know what, I'm just going to push the tower and then free myself up to make bigger rotations in a little while. But 12 minutes in, Team Illusion are doing very well for themselves. Can they continue this and force Six Sigma into a loss this week? As at the moment, they were top of the shop, and Zion, they've played really well to get yeah. to the position they're in so far. And we saw Six Sigma just, uh, just previously come out with a very strong victory in round one. Going to round two, they're having a rough time up against Team Illusion, so... While uh, this is kind of the story we've been seeing the entire EU Challenger Cup, there's just so many teams at the top of the brackets that it's like there's no easy wins. There's no team just like running away with the entire Challenger Cup. Every single team has been upset in early rounds. Every single team has been in a situation like this where it's like, oh, we just completely won against this team that's higher seed and we go against the lower seed team and suddenly we're having a really hard time again. Well, the Harpies get split evenly. Once again, Team Illusion allowing Six Sigma a bit of an opportunity with picking up those left-hand Harpies for the last two times. It's allowing Deku to try and catch up a little bit. Rotations from the solo lane has come out. Finally, Kirko is floating around as well from Team Illusion, but has to go back to defend against Apollo. And Bobasaur means Kazpu in the jungle. Yeah, they just moved the location of the solo lane slap fight a little bit to the middle of the jungle. A change of scenery got boring over there. Left side, though, and you know, that uh... Left lane, but MK is doing a good job of pushing that tower so far. He's got it down just about all the way. Another time or two at it, he will bring that down for the 500 gold bounty for his team. Otherwise, a little bit of group mid lane. Mr. Crunchy oh. bouncing forward, a little bit of a damage applied to Resu. Yeah, good damage done to Resto, actually. Just keep poking him down as much as possible. He has got that Divine Ruin finished, working on the Spear of the Magus as well. So his damage is going to go up and up, currently 4, 0, and 2. And you see player damage at the moment is, is the two solo laners, but you kind of expect that when it's very hard for them to kill each other. Yeah. Divine Ruin is a good pickup by him just because they have those double healers on the side of Six Sigma. It's really not the ideal route as Agni, but despite that, he's still running 4, 0, and 2, and sitting right about in the middle pack on the damage chart. I mean, he's not, it's, it's the soul laners are just slapping each other non-stop and healing it all back up, so they're kind of irrelevant for the time being. But he's right there, despite picking up that oh, Divine right Ruin. All right side, goes aggressive on Kaspu, the heal comes out, Lawbringer 2, Driving Strike, he's already on cooldown for Bobasora. He's going to take the full damage from that Ymir and that Shards of Ice to bring him down. He was winning the trade there for a minute, Zayden, but didn't know the rotation was coming. Yeah, 1v1 there, okay, over there, but when you add a second person, it's like you, uh, you know, the, gauntlet, the, gauntlet was, was th the gauntlet was thrown down, the honor is out the window, we just want kills. We've got to start getting our lead back in control and not let you guys get back into this one. 
So with that, Gold Fury will be up in about a minute. Mid Harpy is around the same time. Team Illusion could yeah. once again look to force a fight over that one. I mean, there was a misstep from Team Illusion about the 11 minute mark if you see the graphs, but ever since then, it's all been going in six sigmas. Sorry, in. Type in Team Illusion's way, slowly continuing to apply pressure. Mr. Crunchy's having to rotate left to help out Vote MBK, who's still level 13, working. Got the device goal is finished now, which is a good news for him. And those four beads, just to make sure he doesn't get plucked by Zata. But I think this duo lane of Zata and Kirko have played very, very well so far. Yeah, some hard farm got Vote MBK back in the game. Still Deku Scrub a little bit further behind, still only single digits in the level department. But he has that. He's actually going for Magic's Blessing right now, not going for the Sovereignty. This will have the benefit of stopping him from getting pulled in and frost breath out and locked down and picked off immediately. It'll definitely help towards that end. But he's not going to be as tanky as otherwise would be, and he's also not going to be providing that aura to his team. Not for the time being. I mean, yeah, you said that as well about Deku's group. He's going for the Medjai's. I think he's going for this because he's just so far behind. He's going to get yeah. CC to high heaven constantly. He's a level 15 year mate to deal with as well. And he'll be constantly looking for the freezes into the stuns from Resu as well. So I can understand this decision from him. I don't think it's the best decision. But when you're behind, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to try and survive and make an impact. It looks like Team Illusion will want to do the Gold Fury. The Sentry up around the area. Solo lanes are rotating as well. And we might see Illusion try and burst this one down. Yeah, they can definitely look to start it up. Nothing else. Look to force a fight. Bobasaur and Kazbu have made their way over from the solo lane, so this will be a full five on five. These teams want to commit to a fight. Kazbu more than happy to do the dance over there by the right lane. He's looking to sweep up in the back line when the fight starts anyway, and as it has, it does. Deku's in a bit of trouble. The heal's already on him, but he's going to get exploded and go down to Resu once again. Crunchy just jump in, but goes straight back to a fairness from Kazpo on the backside. A snipe does connect from Fexes as per usual. Mystical Mail ticking onto the little kitty cat. Kitties do not like tick damage, and she's going to fall down. Fexes, though, going to look to stay in and go aggressive, but he may pay with his life. He does actually go down, but Bulbasaur trades out Samsa, and now the man mounted Hercules is surrounded by three. Yeah, they're going to charge Frey, pulls him back into that one with that Divine Room applied, reducing that healing from them to get wounds. That's going to be another kill going to those guys. That was a three for one trade. And Gold Fury is once again in the sights of Team Illusion. And nobody on the side of Six Sigma is in position to get there in time to try and stop it. And if, if they get over there, see Kaz through like zone now. Look at go. Okay, no one's coming. I'll just pick up some mid harpies while the rest of the team's doing those the Gold Fury. Do we have a record from this game at all? In terms of, in terms of these two teams playing against each other? Um... I actually do not. The stat stuff has been all wonky That's past 24 hours. I was going to pull them. I would love to have that stat for sure. I know they faced each other a number of, number of times. I'm just not sure on the on who, you know, what the actual well, score between them is. It doesn't matter about the past stats, really, when you actually look at what's going on in this game, because Team Illusion yeah. were in full control here. Six Sigma were favorites coming into this, obviously. But they could potentially lose this game if this continues going the way it is going, Zyden. And it's going to be a long, long road for Six Sigma to get back into this. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's been rough. Look at the graph. It's a slow, slow decline with those lovely little steps going down as they pick up those objectives. And we're getting to the point of the game where it's not just going to be about those gold furies. The possibility to group... Well, I don't know, grouping up is going to be risky for both these teams and trying to siege towers early just because of the pulls and displacement abilities coming out from both teams. Like, oh, let's siege this tower and all oh, the AD carry got pulled under and just burst down instantly. You don't want to be in that Wait, kind of position. There is some hope. Vexus is working on that... Um, crown, lowest crown, and when that does actually get finished, they're gonna have the opportunity to sustain a little bit more, yep. get a little bit of tanky for the team, which will help them out. But it's a little bit further off before that is finished for the time being. Right side, Caspi did manage to bring that tier one tower down, and Bobasora might be caught out here. Yeah, he's been locked down, throwing a boulder out, avoiding that frost about the of it. Now he's just a mere matter of can he escape? Mr. Crunchy, one declaw later, it's a withdrawal for Team Illusion. Withdraw for the time. Zata was rotated as well, so if that did continue on. I don't think Team Illusion made the right call then. I don't think they had to kill Bobasaur. They just play it safe. The better side of caution. Let's not get into a fight we don't need to because there's not much else to really do on the map for the time being. So, yeah. experience 10,000 right now in the lead are oh, Team Illusion. So, they're really starting to put the beat down on. Two level ahead is Kazpu on the solo lane. Two levels in the jungle for Samsa. Uh, mid lane, two levels ahead for Resu. Kirko even so that's a good shout out to vote mbk and what he's doing over there and then finally three levels ahead is zata in the support role the lack of frontline though coming out from deku script is still going to be an issue as things go forward he does have blink online so he can just be kind of that wrath of terror initiator for his team but the question is going to be will bobasaur be there for the fights and be that frontline that they need he's the highest level in the game shy of the kazpu on the other side so he's definitely up there 
Will it be enough, though? I mean, Hercules is Hercules, but they have that anti-healing online as well. Well, the siege is happening from Team Illusion. Now they've realized they've got the strength and the lead in multiple rolls, so they're going to start pushing down the mini waves. That is going in, looking for the charge break, does not find it straight to lurking in the waters, though. Cats are forced, the cats are focusing on him. Freeze comes out, but Rafatara blocks that one out. The jump in and out from Mr. Crunchy. Zata in trouble, gets hit by the snipe. The pull does not connect, neither does the Earthbreaker. So he gets away scot free. And now with a lot of ultimates on cooldown, Team Illusion back away, but left on side. Vote MBK, he finds a tower. Small gain coming out of there for Six Sigma. That fight, though, Tier 1 mid kind of traded one for one on that. Going to kind of keep things uh, even in that regard. I mean, Team Illusion, I touched on a little bit earlier, you know, risk initiations. But when your initiator is a crocodile lurking in the waters and crowd control immune, don't worry about a grab coming onto him. The location in the middle lane again. Lawbringer comes out from Caspu into the fearless chain onto Deku Scrub. He's going to be chased down, but Vote MBK comes in around the back. Kirko, though, chasing onto Fex and zoning him away. Vote MBK needs to watch his position on the backside. Bobasaur has been left against the army of Samsa as well as that crocodile. Pouncing from Mr. Crunchy though onto Kirko. Got to force the bleed and the beads out from him. And Caspu comes around for Fexes. Who did miss a snipe? First one in like three weeks straight. Resu will find the kill onto him on the back of that one as Deku Scrub gets locked down. All their crack roll being dumped on him. Can they find the plug? They're gonna find Mr. Crunchy instead. Kazpu cleans up Deku Scrub. Now Mr. Crunchy looking to run away. One more hit. Resu finds that kill. Team Illusion, the fight was spread out three different places, but they cleaned up nevertheless. Really good work from Kazpu there. He got in deeper that tier 2 tower. But what he actually did was he tanked up the tower shot so his team could continue the dive, not take unnecessary damage. This is a big call though. Look how the rest of the team all went back, started going straight for the fire giant. They left Kirko just to continue pushing down that tier 2 tower. Now they can look for the fire giant as well. Only Apollo alive to try and defend this one. Bobasaur is alive with teleport. There's no ward really in the area. Maybe the back left hand side. Oh, sorry, the back top right of the the uh, mid harpies but he's not going to get a chance to do anything no. as he's already down after team illusions he's dead oh yes he is boulder will come out it's going to bounce around do some damage the health bars barely move locked down shards of ice all the abilities he just stood still and accepted his fate on that one so that'll be a back to base for team illusion spend some of that gold they just earned on the back of that push that was a fire giant tier one tier two and a load of kills not quite a delayed deicide vote, MBK, I believe, survived the entirety of the engagement, but five kills, almost a deicide. So Rough situation for Six Sigma now, and this all began because of how duo lane started, honestly. I mean, yeah. mid lane went even, there was nothing really too exciting to be, be mentioned there. I don't feel like Samsa did much on the Ymir, to be fair. This came down to what happened in the duo lane. Kirko and Zata put a beating down on Deku and Vote MBK, and just put them behind. It forced rotations for Mr. Crunchy to come and help them out, and Deku's just been like a, a punch bag for the whole yeah. game from Team Illusion. They've been focusing him with this Sobek flip and the Ymir over and over again. And then when you've got Agni raining bombs down as well, it's hard to get yourself online. So Six Sigma really struggling. And now Team Illusion have the chance to siege up this left hand side. And once again, you see the buff timers, they have track of these. Team Illusion made that invade on the back of the early game kills to keep that pressure applied as long as possible. They're actually gonna let those go for now because why bother with buffs when you can go ahead and just pick up some towers instead. Six Sigma are probably not going to look to defend this tier 2. It's going to be all about those Phoenixes here in a little bit. Deku Scrub actually going to be forced to use that Magi's Blessing bubble to avoid the Tailwind from Zada, so that will be down for a minute. Wait, he's going to get flipped. Back in. And that's a dead Deku once again. He's not going to get away from it. Annihilated before anyone can get him to defend. The Freeze comes out onto Vote MBK. Forcing the beads and the moves away. He's way below half HP now. He's going to have to return back to base, but that doesn't mean Team Illusion's going to stop. They're going to start attacking this up. Is Zata on the front line along with the other two and a half tanks they've got? Yep, that's going to be the Phoenix on the left side dropping. Almost no damage taken by the Team Illusion lineup. Zada just in the front line taking up all of it and still sitting above half its health bar. Some damage being thrown over the wall as well. That mid Phoenix will fall in short order. It's a tier 2 keeping that right side Phoenix safe, but they're turning the engine immediately over to that. Very smart for them to do that as well, bringing that one down. Zata just being a little bit cheeky with those taunts up ahead. I'd be taunting too if I was winning in this game, especially when you're the definite underdogs. And I know Six Sigma like to give the taunts out too sometimes. So, to two times. The right side's going to drop down as well. Illusion. Very wisely, they're going to back to base here and spend this gold. And they still have a minute and a half on that fire drone as well. Look at the golden hand on the side of Team Illusion. They have a lot of gold to go back and spend. They'll actually have some time to go back, shop up, and look to take that final Phoenix down with some time to spare, potentially. I'm... Some words picked up, maybe? It's a little bit off for the Fire Giant fight coming up. It's still two and a half minutes off, but... I mean, the first two Phoenixes went with almost no defense coming out from Six Sigma. If they let that right side Phoenix fall as well, Fire Minions in all three lanes is really tough to come back from. 
Yeah, I mean, just looking at the player damage right now, Kirko, Resu, and Kazpu all up there on the damage charts. Kazpu kind of up there, honestly, because of that mystical mail and the fact he built that along with Hercules in lane. So they just stood there and, you know, did damage consistently to each other. Um, but the Kirko and Resu both right up there as well with their damage, doing great work. Yep. Red MK trying to do what he can to keep those minions pushed out as far as possible. They want to delay this, uh, this constant flow of those farm minions from getting towards that Titan. You can look to defend that Phoenix all you want, but eventually somebody's going to have to turn their attention to the Titan and stop those fire minions from ripping it apart. And at that point in time, it's a nice little window for Team Illusion to look for initiation. And the way they've been playing, they may not even wait for it. They have the option to say, you know, we're going to take the Phoenix now. I don't think they need to do golf here then. They should have just come straight to the right hand side, yeah. sieged up this last Phoenix and looked to end the game out. They've got such a lead right now. They're in a great position to do so. End this. Level 11 on Deku Scrub on the enemy supports. Level 16 is a big example. Level 20 is finally being, re being reached for Team Illusion. Still no level 20s at 25 minutes in this game for Six Sigma. That's problems. Now the Fire Giant buff has now just dissipated from Team Illusion. Blink breaths are coming from Deep Scrub. Boulder over the walls. Well, this is they're looking to make their last stand right last here, stand. right now. Can they find anything though? Fearless comes out of the backside, force infects us away for a moment. The Phoenix is slowly being whittled down by Kirko and Zata. That's going to fall down. Good pull from Deku, but it's on Kaspu, who's very tanky anyway, with that mystical mail. Now the bombs are dropping from Resu too. And the decision once again from Illusion is let's not throw, let's back and get FG. Yeah, no reason to. Look at the Phoenix timers in this one. They can go back to base, pick up the Fire Giant, and pretend, just look at, oh, left lane, Phoenix spawned, we'll kill it. Mid lane, Phoenix spawned, let's kill it again. There's really no time for Six Sigma to get those Phoenixes back up. And with that offset in the final Phoenix as well, the Titan is not going to get any of that health. It's so good. Well, they have to try scratch. and defend. Yeah. Here's the play. They, they, Six Sigma make it the last stand now, and they're going to get picked off straight away. I can see Deku in trouble, surrounded again. Mr. Crunchy in amongst it. They don't even care about Deku right now. Look at him. Now they'll turn their attention back to him because he's a free pickings. Meanwhile, Fexes gets a great snipe off. Not enough to find a kill, though. Now Zat is going to keep chasing with the Lawbringer coming out from two as well. Fexes goes down two on the left hand side. Crunchy's in trouble. Yep, this is only a 4v5 going for Bobasaur has been left to deal with those fire minions back in the base. It's going to be two members down for Six Sigma going forward. The fire giant now, is that's the end up, call. but yep. Nope, the, the call for the end has happened. They've exactly. only taken out Fexes. He was the one of the major threats to deal with. And now they can just push in with these fire minions streaming down all three lanes and just look to end this one. Yep, Titan is definitely in their side. We'll see if they can make this one through. Respawn times. Deacus comes back up, but Fex is still 24 seconds out. As they push this last wave of minions forward, this could be the beginning of the end. They're actually going to turn the tail once again. They don't want to test oh, these illusion is so, They're very scared of Illusion. I think that's the one thing I would love them to work on going into the next games, is yeah. just go in for the end. They have the ability to do so. They're scared it, of throwing. And by doing that, you are buying them a little bit more time to get these items and levels of where a potential throw could happen. I don't necessarily mind this so much, with the shutdown, shutdown gold change, if they were going and actually lose, it'd be 750 gold or so per member of Team Illusion, and that's a lot of gold you don't want to be getting the team back. It's a safer route, you know, we have this in, in the bag anyway, let's just make sure, you know, give us that little bit of an extra bit on the top just to make sure that it's going to stay that way. Get the Fire Giant, go back to base, spend gold, go back for those weakened Phoenixes, they're going to drop almost immediately, they're going to be sitting well below half health by the time they get But every time there. you do this, you're buying the enemy team time to get an item finished. We can see Lotus Crown is already been finished yeah. by Fexes a little bit earlier. We saw crit come online for Apollo as well. It's not a lot of crit, but these things can make a difference in the next engagement. So you've got to be very careful about when you can choose to end or when you choose to play it safe and just try and calmly walk this one home. It feels like they're trying to walk this one home completely. Um, I'm not trying to just play the game and just end it. Mr. Crunchy, going to come out with a quick pause here at the 28 minute mark. Yep, this guy coming out, he'll probably be back here in just a moment. I mean, it's going to be rough going forward for this one, nevertheless, even with a full five member roster for Six Sigma. Those Phoenixes in the left and mid lane, like as we said, were brought down already. They're going to die very, very quickly. The right side Phoenix is still going to be down for a long while, so there's no regeneration coming to that Titan. We've seen games where the Titan has survived with just a few percentages of health. One case, not even 1% of health on the health bar. So every bit on that Titan could be the difference between Six Sigma mounting a defense and losing it. And with Team Illusion now bearing down on their base once again, they're going to need every little bit they can possibly find. Oh, with that wall, that's going to be a Phoenix dead in this left-hand side. And there it goes, drop down. Middle Phoenix is going to be the siege point. This is Six Sigma's last stand. The chance for them to try and get in already. They're in trouble. Fexes getting flipped back into danger zone. Blocked below half health. Gets exploded by Resu's bomb once again. He's now 10-0 and 7. As the rest of the team starting to bring down the Titan. This looks like Six Sigma going to take a loss here. It's looking like a Vodem McKay will fall as well. It's a double kill coming out for Resu. It's a Titan health. Not really been focused so far. Going for more kills. Kirko will clean up one more. 
as now they don't really have many more targets to go for, but that Titan, couple more kills coming out, it's paying those stats, Samson gets one, Bumps are still alive, looking to pull somebody on the fountain, but the Titan will fall, fall before he has the chance to do so, Team Illusion take out first seed going into the group stages to find themselves a victory for themselves really good work from team illusion the, uh, basically the, for me that game came down to zato and kuko early game and resu's rotations on yeah. the agony he went 11 0 and 9 he really made an impact in that game did resu on top of the fact that jewel ain't got going early on great work from the team as a whole team illusion thoroughly deserved that win there's no discredit you can give oh, him yeah. for that one at all really good performance and now it's going to make things a lot more interesting in the rest of the group. Oh, for sure. So things are going to be even down to that. We'll be moving on to one final game out of Group A here in just a minute, guys. Stick around. We'll be back with that one as soon as possible.